Yo, what's going on guys, Anders here. Today's video I'm gonna share with you a little bit about my experience after upgrade my MacBook Pro 2014 and we are gonna check if it's worth it or not to do this upgrade. Now, without further ado, let's get started. First off, this MacBook Pro 2014 features a 2.5 GHz Core i7 CPU, 16GB of RAM, an NVIDIA GeForce GT 750M and 1TB of storage. Now the problem with upgrading this MacBook Pro is that the RAM, CPU and GPU are part of the motherboard, so the only thing that we can really upgrade is the storage. In this case we will be using a 1TB Seagate Firecuda 510 SSD. Now I know that it's the same amount of storage space that the MacBook originally had, but believe me when I said that it will make a big difference since this PCIe N.2 SSD can get read and write speeds of to 3450 and 3200 megabytes per second, which is incredible fast. If you want to know more about the Firecuda SSD, you can find a link to our full review in the description below. Anyways, in regard of the M.2 speeds, it's expected to get lower numbers on the speed for two reasons. One, the motherboard model of the MacBook Pro is updated in comparison with the SSD. And two, we will need to use an adapter since Apple has their own kind of M.2. After setup up our new M.2, we can do a comparison before and after, and we can see that we improve the read and write speeds by 400 megabytes per second which is expected for the reasons that I already mentioned before. Like I said in the beginning of the video, this MacBook Pro has a GeForce GT 750M, which is a really upgraded graphic card for the standards that Premiere is asking right now. And it's a component that we can actually don't upgrade from this MacBook Pro. But something that we can actually do is add more power using an eGPU, like this one. This is the Razer Core X eGPU. And inside of that, just to give a little bit more power, we are using a Radeon 7 for the AMD. Just a little bit more power. The Razer Core X Chroma is a Thunderbolt 3 eGPU built in a really nice aluminum chassis that features four USB ports, one Ethernet port, and also beautifully displays RGB on the front and side of the chassis. The one that unfortunately we can only control on Windows. I don't think I really need to introduce the Radeon 7, but what the hell? This GPU features 16 gigabytes of memory, one terabyte of memory bandwidth, so you already know that this is a monster of graphics card. Setting up the eGPU is really easy, you just need to drag the graphics card into the Razer Core X PCIe slot, insert the power connector, and you are basically ready to go. Now this eGPU comes with a Thunderbolt 3 cable, which we actually can't use since our MacBook Pro use Thunderbolt 2. So we will need to get a Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 cable adapter and one Thunderbolt 2 cable to make this connection. At first, your MacBook Pro won't detect the eGPU, so you will need to install a software called Porsche Wrangler. I recommend you checking out a very good tutorial of how to do this by Ruslan Tulupov. The one you can find linked on the description below. After purging my MacBook Pro, I come across with three main problems. At first, it detects the eGPU, but then I got a black screen. After doing some research, it turns out that my MacBook Pro was still working with NVIDIA GPU. So I needed to install another software called Porsche NVDA or NVIDIA to switch between the two GPUs. After following the steps and a lot of adjustments, it was finally working. I was able to work directly using Radeon 7, but now I'm left with two very annoying issues. The first one is that even if I close my MacBook Pro to work with a single monitor, the laptop won't turn off. The second problem is that after a certain period of time, a MacBook Pro will restart with no reason, making it really annoying to work on. Overall, I have to say that I personally spend a lot of time trying to make this work. And I'm talking about this testing, crashing OS X, and starting all over again. Not to mention all the cables and hardware that I needed to buy, and by the end, I'm still stuck with two problems. So unless you really have the time to trial and error several times, and have a lot of patience, you might be able to successfully upgrade your MacBook Pro. Otherwise, you would probably be better off just buying a new one. 
And that's all for today's video, my friends. I hope now you have a better idea if it's worth it or not to upgrade your MacBook Pro or just get a new one. Let us know what you think about it on the comments below. If you like the video, don't forget to give the thumbs up, share, subscribe, and smash the notifications bell on that you won't miss any of our future videos and content. If you want to support the channel, it's very easy. You can take a look to our Patreon page where you can get access to exclusive media and more. My name is Sanders. See you next time.